two. As energy costs keep climbing, put your energy bills in check. Call today and find out how affordable ABC Seamless products can be. This is CNN. This is CNN's World News. What you need to know, what you want to know. With Bernard Shaw in Washington and Susan Rook in Atlanta. The president falls ill in Tokyo but refuses to stay down. Aides say he's just about ready to get back to work after fighting the flu. And now there are five. One of the major Democratic presidential candidates pulls his hat out of the ring. Thank you for joining us. It is now noon in Tokyo. President Bush has bowed out of several appearances on his morning schedule. But aides say he will meet with Japanese Prime Minister Kiichi Miyazawa in about an hour and a half. Mr. Bush's trip to Japan was supposed to focus on trade issues, but right now it's focusing on his health. Here's CNN's Charles Beerbauer. The president's schedule in Tokyo was curtailed because, as spokesman Marlon Fitzwater put it, the president is human, he gets sick. The major symptoms have subsided. All of the president's vital signs this morning are normal, as they were last night. There is no indication of any illness other than the common flu. No medication has been prescribed for today. The president's doctors say the flu is not related to the heart and thyroid problems he suffered last year. Prior to his collapse at dinner Wednesday, the president had complained of nothing more than a bit of jet lag on this extensive trip. The president sent Treasury Secretary Brady and Commerce Secretary Mossbacher to stand in for him at public events, and hard-nosed trade talks with the Japanese continued without a halt and without a breakthrough. On both sides have very strong uh, positions and a lot at stake, and uh, we're working those very hard. President Bush said he hoped his illness would not detract from the focus of the visit, but it has, with the pictures of a collapsed president flashed around the world. This is, after all, an election year. Does the fact that he was so publicly, visibly ill last night make a political problem for your next job, given the public opinion polls about Dan Quayle as his possible successor? No. First of all, uh, you know, we've all had the flu bug, and he bounced right back. He's doing well. He's in good shape. The president, who left the dinner on his feet, sought to make light of it. He is in good spirits. He's concerned about the inconvenience caused to dinner guests last night. He joked he might have a large dry cleaning bill to deal with. President Bush plans to fly home to Washington on schedule Friday. Next week, he'll be out on the campaign trail with two things to explain, whether his health is up to the job and whether his trip to Japan has produced any jobs. Charles Beerbauer, CNN, Tokyo. And coming up later, we will have more on the president's condition, including a report on how his collapse has focused new attention on Vice President Dan Quayle. A surprise announcement from Virginia Governor Douglas Wilder tonight. He is pulling out of the 92 presidential race. CNN's Deborah Potter has our report. Wilder used the occasion of his annual State of the Commonwealth speech to pull out of the race, saying the rigors of running Virginia while also running for president had become just too much to handle. I was left with a choice, either to devote all my energies to delivering the message or to guiding Virginia through these difficult times. I have chosen the latter. In fact, Wilder's message was not going over all that well on the campaign trail. Recent polls in New Hampshire showed him dead last. The nation's first elected black governor, Wilder had hoped to turn things around in the southern primaries, counting heavily on the black vote. But he never caught on with what should have been his base. I think uh, what he found is that it was a bit uh, too conservative uh, for the politics of the black community. And so he was having real trouble uh, bringing all of the forces together that would have given him an immediate base for this campaign. Wilder's departure opens the way for the five remaining Democratic candidates to aggressively court black voters. He was in a unique position to really argue issues like equal opportunity and access and those kinds of things. In that respect, I think that the debate will be lessened. The biggest gainer now that Wilder's gone is most likely Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton. He issued a statement saying Wilder's decision is, quote, overwhelming evidence of the crying need in this country for a national partnership between the president and the states to turn our economy around and give real opportunity to the people. And I think the other guy who feels really good about it is Bill Clinton, who I think gets a real opportunity 
to build a genuine biracial coalition for the nomination because he has more natural support both amongst blacks and whites in the South for Super Tuesday. He becomes a much stronger candidate as of tonight. As for Wilder, observers say he may still have a future in national politics, either as a vice presidential candidate or possibly in the U.S. Senate. Deborah Potter, CNN, Washington. And joining us now to talk about Governor Wilder's withdrawal from the presidential race, a man who considered entering the field himself, Jesse Jackson. On Saturday, Reverend Jackson began hosting his own interview program on CNN. Your first blush reaction to what happened tonight. Well, I was surprised that he, that he made this decision, but his rationale, the sound, is the same one that Governor Cuomo had to make, that the burdens of his state was of such. He had to make a choice. Forty-one states are in deficit spending or in a fiscal crisis. His departure leaves a hole in the campaign because his very presence was a kind of a symbol of conscience and there were certain issues that had to be dealt with by virtue of his presence. I noticed in the debate last uh, Sunday on the domestic agenda no one mentioned urban at all and on the foreign policy did not mention Haiti or, or South Africa. And so there's a real danger that his absence will create a kind of uh, shift away from cities and towns, and of course it becomes our burden to make certain that that does not happen. In your gut, do you wish you had not dropped out of the race? Do you wish you had not decided to run, I should ask? <clears throat> I'm satisfied with the decision that was made. Uh, my commitment to D.C. statehood is very substantial. I think in the long run, expanding our democracy <clears throat> to include D.C. Uh, more people live here than, than five states. We pay more taxes than ten. More youth in the Persian Gulf than 20 states. We have the right to be in the U.S. Senate and in the House. Uh, I accept that decision. Beyond that, the Rainbow Coalition has accepted the burden of helping to establish an agenda of the Rebuild America, a humane priorities agenda. And actually, the governor's dropping out today. It accentuates the meeting that we're planning. On January 25th, all of the announced candidates are coming to a Rainbow Coalition forum. We have mayors and congresspeople from around the country gathering to meet with them one-on-one -on -one to hear their plans to reindustrialize America, to rebuild America. And that will be our basic thrust. Looking at the field strategically, who's helped, who's hurt by this? Well, at this point, in a strategic sense, probably Governor Clinton is helped because he has the most substantial campaign at, at this point. Uh, but uh, lurking uh, in the wings would, would be Harkin and, uh, and, and Kerry as well. Given the way this has affected the field tonight, the governor's announcement, do you see yourself planning and looking ahead seriously to a run in 96? Well, that, that is a bit far off. Uh, I still intend to run for the presidency again uh, at some point in time. But right now, I'm more interested in trying to shift the environment in the country than running for the presidency. My concern now is that there are 10 million people unemployed and 20 million jobless and 35 million in poverty and 40 million without health insurance. And the more that we narrow the scope to something called middle class, which is to say we're going after the, the potential voters rather than the critical needs, uh, we are going to lose. It's possible, for example, with the front loading that a Democratic candidate can win the nomination early and have the nomination but not have the people. And I feel some special obligation to keep focusing on the homeless, the jobless, the need for health care, to educate our children. I am convinced that's where the voters are, that's where the conscience is, that's where the margin of victory is. The Reverend Jesse Jackson, thanks so much for coming in and uh, taking a look at this late development. Thank Very you. Well. Susan? Still ahead on World News, big ticket strategic weapons are coming under fire and could become casualties of budget cuts. The battle to protect the Northwest timber industry or the spotted owl drives a wedge between government agencies. And the hit record is rewarded by the music industry and the band takes a lion's share of Grammy nominations. You wanna accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. Tune in 
to the affirmative, the family channel, yes indeed. Nobody captures life on the positive side like the family channel. Or